YouTube, Rick Stivers here. And uh, today's project is going to be, I know, I know, some of you will say, why are you opening that? That's brand new. Well, this is the uh, commemorative 75th anniversary Zebco 33 reel. And uh, we're going to take this thing apart today and show you how to service it. And who knows, maybe this will become the most valuable one because it was the first one to ever have a video made of taking it apart. Who knows? I don't, don't think it's ever really going to be worth a whole lot. I've already been into it. If you notice, the uh, zip tie is missing off of the side here. I've already removed that. And I haven't taken the card out of the holder here, but I understand that there is a uh, bunch of signatures on the back of it. So if you want to open this up without destroying it, you take this reel, remove that zip tie, take this, push it as far forward as it'll go, and then kind of pop it out. Or did it go backwards? Yep, yeah, backwards and then out. And I still managed to tear it a little bit. Guess what? I'm not worried about destroying the box. I might even take this out and fish the thing. All right, so right now it works perfectly functional. Uh, line comes out, line winds in. Um, be perfectly honest, I was kind of hoping for a slightly better quality reel than what this one is. Um, it, uh, it's all right. I, I think it'll last a little bit if you take them out and fish with it. But anyway, let's take a look. I'm going to pop off the top cover. I'm going to snip off the tab. There we go. That way we can get the cover out of the way. And we are going to unscrew the rotor off of it. you got to hold the handle to unscrew the rotor. Okay, there's the rotor. Nice and clean inside. Okay, we're going to take this off. But first, we want to go ahead and take off the back cover. And somebody on uh, Facebook was complaining already because theirs came in. And uh, let's see if I can make it look kind of like that one was. And theirs came in like that. Okay. And that don't look right, does it? Okay. All you got to do to fix that is open it up, take it up, hook that back in the loops there. It's not a very robust design. I might actually bend those in, tweak them in just a little bit uh, because... It's real, real easy for that to fall out. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, you would think that those would... I would have almost preferred that they were a closed loop that you had to kind of bend slightly to the side to take off. And uh, so, but there it is. It just doesn't look like it's going to take that much to accidentally bump that out of the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and squeeze those tabs in just a hair. Just a hair, the small, smallest amount. I don't want to squeeze it in so much that it grabs hold of the button. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm hoping that's going to hold a little better. And by the way, my serial number is 0884. Let's set that over to the side, and we're going to go ahead and remove... The uh, handle by going to the opposite side. And uh, I have a custom made screwdriver for this, but I don't have it on my bench right now. I've got it at the other end of the house. And uh, I don't feel like going over to get that right now. There we go. Screws out. Now the handle's out. That brings us over to this point. Now, to take it apart from here, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and take the uh, drags apart by taking out this C-clip. And let's zoom back out again. Sorry about that. Take off this C-clip. That allows us to take off this steel drag washer. And... Yeah, this drag washer. They've got a little bit of lubricant on there. I'm not used to dealing with brand new reels. I usually get to play with the old stuff. And there's the drag washer. Okay, now they have greased these, so we're going to grease them again when we put them back. Okay, because apparently at the factory they felt they needed to. Okay, and we'll set the spool off to the side. And that brings us over here. This has already popped out. It was sitting in here like so. Okay, so we're going to take this out, and there is 
this is two parts. One is this ring right here. It's going to fit in there. Okay, that's got those out. We've got the real almost all part already. Now, to take this next part out, we're going to have to take and pop this clip out right here. Be very careful because it could very well take off flying on you. I have lost one of these on a reel before. Okay, with that out now, we're going to come over to this side first and push this bushing out from the side. And then we're going to go on this side and they put a bearing over here. There we go. There's the bearing out. Now, those are identical in size, so if you wanted to kind of hot rod this reel, you could go and acquire a bearing for this one. This one has a shim that goes on, the bearing does, in between it and this main gear. Now we can slide the main gear out. And uh, I'm still looking for where the anti-reverse is on this thing. And it appears... That there's not one in it, which means, yeah, you would. I would have thought that there would be an anti-reverse lever in here, especially since they have a gear for it on here. But what they've done instead is put an anti-reverse um, clutch bearing inside here. Okay, there it is, right there. That's your anti-reverse. Now we've got another bearing here. Okay. And there is the reel basically taken apart. Well, this guy fell out, which means we can now go ahead and take this out through the bottom if we want to. But it has most likely, let's uh, see, I don't see a uh, clicker. Sounds like there's a clicker in there, though. Some of these reels have a ball and spring clicker, and uh, you don't want to lose that if it's in there. So I'm going to leave that part in not take it out just in case there is a clicker in there. All right, so that's the whole thing disassembled. We're going to turn around now and re I don't have to do any cleaning because it's already clean. I am going to put a little lubricant here and there, but um, we're all pretty well set. All right. Now, if you'll notice, everybody will tell you not to lubricate these um, clutch bearings. And this already has grease inside it. So it came that way from the factory with grease in it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more grease in there. We're going to look at this bearing. Bearing's in really good shape, but I'm going to go ahead and oil it again. We're going to slide the bearing on. Slide the anti-reverse on. And it should go on this way so that you can... Twist this clockwise, but you can't twist it counterclockwise. With that done, we can go ahead and set that back inside the body. And there's little splines inside. There's another bearing you can replace on the front. You can take this bushing out right here and put a bearing in its place. You know what? I'm going to go see if I've got any of those. This would be a good time to upgrade this reel. I'll be right back. Nope, too big. Looks like I don't have any. I have one place left to check, and that's in my used bearing kit. All right, I have two bearings. And since these are old used bearings, I'm going to go ahead and soak them down a little bit. Now, you might ask, where in the world did he get a kit full of old used bearings? Well, I inherited them from my dad. So, all right, we got that part done. We are just about ready to start putting things back together. We've got that one in. Oh, we need one of these new bearings to go in the end here because we replaced it. Oh, we put the bushing back in, didn't we? Okay. Go ahead and push the bushing out. There we go. Bushing is out. 
put the bearing in its place and go ahead and reset the ax uh, axle shaft there we go like that okay now I'm going to come back and add a little bit of grease to the main gear and that will in turn grease the pinion gear that we just put back in so we'll go ahead and set that down in place with that installed we can now put the new replacement bearing in on this side and the easy way to install that get it to go on in is to uh, put the handle in there kind of slide it in there we go and that's going to snug up the rest of the way when we tighten down the, the handle okay on this side remember we've got this shim washer that has to go on first and we'll go ahead and just attach that to the bearing and then we'll slide the bearing in Yeah, it looks like it's getting too difficult, so I'm going to take it back out and get that shim off of there and get it put on first. It looks like I was working too hard to uh, get that to go where it needed to go. So we're going to slip the shim washer on first. There we go. And now we'll come back and put the bearing in, and I've noticed that the one fell out of the other side already. Okay, I'm going to hold my finger in there while we put this one back in this side. All right. I'm going to slide those back in. Okay, that one's in. And I'll hold it right here. And that one fell out again. No, it didn't. Where does that one go? Why do I have an extra? Oh, that's out of the nose. Okay. All right. Let's put that one. We will put the handle back on on this side. Slide it down, there we go. All right, now we're almost where we need to be. We need to be able to put that clip back in. That clip goes right here. You gotta make sure both ends are inside the holes for it. There we go, clip's installed. And now the bearing is, or the axle is where it needs to be. It's properly shimmed again. Put back in there, we're going to put this bearing back in the end that fell out where the um, <clears throat> where the bushing used to be. So I took these two bushings out and we installed a uh, couple of bearings. And if anybody needs to know, I'll, I'll, I'll put the info in here for what size bearings those are. Okay, now this wants to ride in here so let's go ahead and reinstall our clicker now I have another reel sitting around here somewhere uh, I'm pretty sure it's a 33 that's missing that piece because it fell out on somebody and I got the reel and I don't have that part all right next we're going to put this back on and then we're going to rotate it using the drag knob and we're going to rotate it all the way around until we get to the end right there with that there, then this curved washer goes on. It's kind of a bell shape. Can you see that? It's kind of bell shaped, and the bell is going to go to the bottom, right down inside here. Next is going to go this steel washer with the keyway on it. That's going to lock into there. On top of that, it's going to go this um, drag washer, and if this wasn't already greased, I would take and add just a little bit of grease around here, but I don't want to overdo it. It's already got grease on it, so we're going to put it back that way. Okay, we're going to come back now, put the spool back on, and over the spool, I'm going to wipe this one off. This one feels a little gritty, and I don't know if it's grit that came off of my stuff or what, but it feels just a little bit gritty, so we're going to put a thin film of grease here, put the drag washer on, and give it another thin coating of grease on the other side. Now this one doesn't feel gritty. So we'll now put that on top. And the only thing left there 
to go in is going to be this C-clip. And we've got to make sure we're down all the way. Okay, and drag for this. Okay, that's, we are all the way in the negative position for drag. So that's down as far as it's going to go. And we've got to get this E-clip, C-clip to go in. There we go. That's done. Now, if this were 10 years from now and I were servicing this reel, I would have cleaned out all the old grease down here and put some new grease in. But there's no need to. It looks really good. But the points that I would grease are up underneath these rollers. And I would put a drop of oil. I'm going to go ahead and put the drop of oil anyway because these look dry. I would put a drop of oil on these two posts right here. Okay. And then go ahead and push forward on the axle shaft like this. And then go ahead and roll or spin the rotor back on. We will set, well, we're going to set it up as a right hand. We're going to set the handle back in. And now we're going to screw the screw back in that holds the handle in place. And I probably should have gone and got that other screwdriver while we were waiting. You know what? I'm going to make one real quick. Okay. I just took this one and modified it. And put that curve on it. And I might have put a little too much curve on it. We'll see. But it's working a lot better than the original. tighten it there we go and i really felt like they should have some kind of a cap or something over this but they didn't so i was a little disappointed by that okay that's there that feels good let's go ahead now see how easy that falls out there's not a lot of room once it's turned so it's kind of got to be that way they didn't leave you much room Okay, let's go ahead, line up the pins on the back. Rotate it back into place so that it's straight up and down. Turn around this way. Let's go ahead and put our line back in. And I'm really disappointed at how much set there already is in this reel. I don't know when they actually manufactured these reels. There's a lot of set in a line, a lot of curve. Look at that, a lot of memory. And, uh, I was going to actually go out and fish this thing, I'd probably want to change out the line. Okay, there we go. Locked in place. And uh, trying to read what that says. Let me, let me get a good look at that. Yeah, it says designed in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But it does not say made in Tulsa. Okay. Because the plant's gone in Tulsa. Factory. It's gone. And I think there might be some folks here on... Out there on the Zebco Facebook that actually have some of the stuff from there. I think somebody actually has the sign that used to sit out front, but I'm not positive that. I think I seem to recall having seen it on here somewhere. And we're going to tie the tab back on. And we're not using a good high quality knot. We're just putting a knot. Okay. There we go. Clip off the excess. There we go. Wind it in. And not only did you get to see the first servicing of one of these Zebco 75th anniversaries on the internet, but you also got to see me hot rod it. By adding two bearings. See if it feels any different. Drags it there. Let's 
tighten the drag down a little bit. Yep, drag's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of set in that line. The other thing I'm a little disappointed with is how sharp the edge is out here um, on the, the cap. I would have expected more of a rolled edge there or a bead, beaded ring, uh, but it's not a high dollar reel, folks. It's a commemorative. So there you have it. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. Maybe you didn't like the fact that I broke into the 75th anniversary reel box and uh, took it out and took it apart. But uh, I, I know there's some folks out there that really wanted to see what was going on in this thing. Uh, see what's there. And didn't want to have to take theirs apart. So here it is. I'm going to put the box back together and uh, set it back down in there. And that's probably where it will stay. It'll never, I don't believe this will ever be worth a lot. It's, uh, it is a commemorative piece. And uh, usually those pieces aren't worth a lot of money. Uh, it is a limited edition. And I believe, yep, made in China. So there is that. Uh, I don't know what the cancer warning is up for it on it. Probably the grease. But um, there you have it. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.